Hello everybody, today I wanted to talk about Bamboo Lab because there have been a lot of leaks lately about their new H2D 3D printer and I thought it was really interesting and it really made me think where are they headed next? Looking at the leaks, the H2D 3D printer looks to be bigger. The reason I say that is because the AMS unit looks really small on top of it compared to the P1P or X1 Carbon where it fills most of the top of it. On here it fills like just the middle. That is assuming that it's the same AMS unit up here as it is right there, but if you look at the filament spools, it looks like it's gotta be. Another thing I notice is that the tool changer or the tool heads looks like it could have two nozzles on it. So I'm either thinking it's two heads on one bar, like a dual extrusion, or it's just one tool head with two nozzles where filament can come out. But anyway, these leaks show how unpredictable Bamboo Lab could be, because a few years ago, when everybody thought they were going to release a giant printer, they ended up releasing the A1 Mini, which really shocked a lot of people. But the release of the A1 Mini did really well because it was a great entry-level printer. Before, if you wanted to get a printer like an Ender 3, which was the same price, it would have no good features and you'd have to tinker for five days before you could get a Benchy off it. With this, you set it up in 5 minutes, and then you get a printing, and then you get a benchy in 15 minutes. It's got features that most big printers don't have, like automatic bed leveling, flow calibration, stuff like that. So when you can get all that for $200, or $450 with the combo, it's just a great entry-level printer for most people. And then they went bigger with the A1, which was a great release too, because if you didn't like the size of the A1 Mini, you could spend 100 bucks more and get something the size of their other big printers. This just shows that whatever market they try and they dominate. Because when they released the X1 and X1C, which was a printer that you didn't have to tinker with or anything, it just printed, everybody loved it. And that made them release a bare bones kind of stripped down version, the P1P, which I'll get to in just a minute. The reason they dominate is because all their features on their big models, they try to bring down to their little ones for a cheaper price. Like the P1P has most of the features of the X1C, automatic bed leveling, multicolor printing, a lot of stuff. And that even goes down to their cheap baseline printers. The fact that you can spend any amount of money that your budget has and get a printer as good or better than any other printer that price with big features is just a great selling point. They started as DJI engineers and ended up making a printer that they could just print with. And then the X1 became obsolete when they released the P1P because if you were going to spend 100 bucks less for all those missing features, you might as well just get the P1P because you already can't print the materials because it's not hardened steel. So they discontinued the X1 and then after that they released the P1S an enclosed version of the P1P for people who wanted an X1 style printer without the touch screen without the hardened steel. But you can't upgrade it now to a hardened steel nozzle. After that, they released the A1 Mini, which is where everybody thought they would release a bigger printer, like the Cobra 3 Max. But they ended up releasing a mini printer with a slogan, Multicolor Printing for All. This slogan really sold them a lot because you could get $450 combo with all the multicolor features of their bigger printers and even a little bit faster because of the way it poops. This price and this selling point really helped them dig into the market. So they went bigger. They went with the A1. And the A1 is literally just the A1 Mini, but bigger. All the features moved up to it, everything. Except now it's got a 250, 250, 250 build instead of a 180 by 180 by 180 build plate. The market I believe they're aiming for next, though, is the industrial market. And the leaks really just prove that I'm right. We've already been seeing 3D prints move to businesses. Like, I got a gear ball for Christmas from somebody who didn't even know I 3D printed. So think about all the unique niche scenarios that businesses have that 3D printing could solve. It's just a great selling point for Bamboo Lab. I know they had the X1E release a little bit ago, but that was a completely different printer. It was basically the X1 Carbon, but like a different color scheme. And it didn't really sell all too great because the X1 Carbon was about the same. I know it had a little bit more to it, like some more like harder filament stuff. The things I really think they're going to focus on though, besides just being bigger, is precision and quality. Because while these printers are great with precise parts and quality, if you get like a $7,000 3D printer, it's going to be so precise, you won't even be able to see the layer lines. And I feel like that's what they're trying to go for. Injection molded like parts, 3D printed. But tell me what y'all think in the comments, and I'll make another video like this probably next Saturday. So I'll see you then.